Let's take a look at the different ways that we can export particles from thinking particles into max objects. Um, the important thing to know with exporting TP into max objects is that we cannot export um, vertex deformation. So if you're using a shape collision with uh, the particle group deformation controls, or maybe you're using a vertex to particle and having kind of a simulated cloth or soft body, um, you cannot export that particle as a deforming mesh. So it's really just uh, position, rotation, and scale. Um, as well, you can also export fragments, um, but you cannot export the remaining mesh in a fragment because it's a changing topology uh, from frame to frame. Okay, but what we do have um, here under the operators under the export category, we've got both an export and a particle to object. We're going to take a look at both of these. Um, right now we've got a few rules out here. Born in volume creates some particles. Follow node has them follow a node on this path. And then export methods is where we're going to take a look at our export options. And we're going to go ahead and disable these right now and just scrub this to see what we've got going on. Uh, we can see some particles rolling around there. They're spinning around uh, their direction of travel and they're kind of following this node. So let's go ahead and take a look first at particle to object. Um, we're going to go ahead and enable this frame zero and the way particle to object works is uh, it works best when you control the on input and we're gonna, we've got it set up with a time interval because particle to object is going to take all the particles connected to it and it's going to turn those particles into max objects at a specific point in time. Uh, the idea behind this is that you tur turn them into max objects at a certain time and then use them in a some other uh, dynamic simulation. Uh, the thing about this is that it's going to remove them from being uh, TP particles. It basically just takes them out of the whole TP equation at that time as well. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. We've got the time interval set up to 240. So as soon as we get to frame 240, it will turn these particles into uh, max objects. And boom. So there it is. There's the blink. Um, and now you can see that when we select these, um, we get a bunch of separate objects. Uh, as well. You can, we'll go ahead and select by name and we can see we've got a whole bunch of all with uh, a suffix of a number. Okay, so what this has done is, and we can scrub back here, we can see our particles still exist and then as soon as we get up to that frame 240 it's going to boom, change them into max objects and we just no longer see those all particles roaming around. Okay, so you can tell also these have some uh, animated opacity keys on them too. Their their visibility is ramping up until the point where they are, are turned into max objects. So again, the idea with this is um, have them exist as TP particles for a while and then turn them into max objects. Um, they have their position and velocity information, spin information, and then you're supposed to be able to use that in some other dynamic simulation engine uh, outside of TP. Okay, so that's particle to object. That's one way we can do it. Um, we're going to go ahead and back up. We're going to disable that operator. And you'll see that it still leaves these uh, particle objects out here, these max objects. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just select all those, make sure we don't delete the path, and get rid of them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the other method, which is export. We're going to go ahead and enable this. Now export, we can scrub all day long and it's not going to export anything. What we have to actually do is hit this export button. Um, the most important thing to know about export is that the quality by default is 50, uh, which is generally not high enough. You might as well just always um, export at quality 100. That's the best way to ensure the tightest quality and tightest uh, particle matching. Um, just for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and compare this. We'll do a quality of 50, and we'll go ahead and hit the export button. And you can kind of see it up here in this top viewport. We get a bunch of uh, different colored uh, objects. These are actually separate max nodes, one for each particle. Um, and what we're going to do is, when we press H to bring up the select dialog, we can see now we have a new, uh, we've got select subtree turned on. We've got a new kind of parent object called TP op export. 
and this acts as a if we select this this thing is just a it's kind of a null uh, it doesn't even it exists here at 000, zero, zero. and it just acts as a, a null parent for all the actual exported geometry uh, we can go ahead and select let's uh, turn off TP there and we can see all these guys we can see as they roll around there and we can see that we can actually pick each one we can see all their keyframes here we can see how they're kind of spread out um, there's some holes in those keyframes some gaps that is because of the quality set to 50 it's just going to kind of interpolate with a 50 percent sampling method um, let's do this let's go ahead and turn on uh, select subtree select our parents selects all the children and what we're going to do is we're going to apply this green material to them. Uh, now they show up as green. Those are all the exported objects. Now we're going to come back and enable TP, which is going to create a bunch of red objects. And what we want to do is just kind of look and, and spot the differences. Well, right away you can see that these green guys um, are already uh, going in a different direction than these red particles. So you can see where the 50% the accuracy is really not uh, going to deliver you uh, tight enough results but you know that's not a big deal all we have to do is come to export uh, we're gonna say remove which is actually gonna remove um, that whole object hierarchy that TP op exports now gone um, when we refresh we can see that those green objects are gone um, so it basically just removes everything that it had previously exported uh, let's go ahead and set this to 100 and go ahead and export Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, first let's disable TP, let's select the TP op export, apply that green material, take a quick look, and now let's go ahead and enable TP. And we're going to be able to see right away that, uh, let's get that shaded, we can see that we get a lot of overlap here. These faces are very, very tightly matching. And what's going to happen now is um, all those exported objects are very closely going to follow uh, the actual particles. And so they'll do that all the way around. So just remember, if you're going to export and you want good quality, just go ahead and set it to 100. Um, when we, let's go ahead and turn off TP and we'll select one of these guys. We can see now that we get um, a lot of extra keyframes in here. This looks like uh, subframe sampling. Um, or maybe just our timeline is, let's go ahead and try our timeline at 100. Yeah, so we get basically one key, we get a position and rotation key per frame. So, very high quality. Let's go ahead and set that back to 300 for our range. Um, okay, so we've exported these objects. Um, we've got, when we use the export function, we get this TP op export parent null, which um, all of his children are all these sub objects. Um, at this point, we can we'll turn off select subtree. We could select that object and we can actually offset him. Uh, enable TP, and we'll see now that we can offset and control those further. Uh, but now, this is just kind of one way we could do it. Let's go ahead and actually, we'll set up, and in the next video, we're going to do a, an export using fragments. Let's go ahead and set this TP op export back to 000. Okay, and we'll save this as the end scene.